Um, I also want to acknowledge um, Yugan Bay country where I live, work and play and the ancestors um, past and present. Um, so I'm just going to give you a bit of context before we get into the making side of things so that you, you, you know and can understand where visual diaries come from. So I've just got, I've got two slides <laughs> because I don't want to take up our valuable making time. Because both Katie and I think that's the most exciting part, but I also think it's really good to have kind of a, a structure to understand what's going on. So I'm just going to share my PowerPoint with you now. Mm -hmm. Share screen. Okay, let's see. Okay, can everybody see that one? Yep. Yep. Um, you might want to share it bigger. Bigger? Hang just, on. If you just go from current side, it should do it. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Okay, awesome. So um, I chose Suzanne um, as someone who is, um, is a modern artist. Um, you don't often see um, artists' diaries. They we kind of keep them very private because Basically, they're, they're places where we can, we can do a lot of stuff and they're kind of the place where you can be free. So you won't see, sometimes they do actually in galleries, you can see artists' um, visual diaries alongside their work, but very rarely. And I, I find it really exciting when I can see them because I love to be able to see inside another artist's mind and see how they work things out, um, what they're using to loosen up, and what kind of you know like some some visual diaries like this one from Suzanne is, is just completely visual others have um, words and text and you know people work things out they work out how things are going to look in a gallery you can work out um, you know smaller thumbnails of things that can you know become that transfer into bigger images or they can just be creative processes on their own um, so a modern here's a here's a modern artist um well a, a postmodern artist probably kathy elliott um and she's there is no judgment and they just exist so i think that's that's a really important message to get across is that your visual diary is very personal to you and what you put in it is completely up to what you're working with and, and what you have you know what you want to do so it's you can have um, notes and drawings quotations readings um, observations you can use any media that you like and um, I like to use it as a, a daily meditative practice so I use my visual diary every day and it's it's if anybody's ever read the artist's way it's like the artist's pages so it's for me it's a way of turning up in the studio which is which can be metaphorical um you don't actually have to have a physical space but turning up um on the page and getting stuff down so that's 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 my context if you want to add anything katie to that oh. No, not really. Um, I, I use my visual journal probably not every day, although more so lately. Um, and, and it's a space for me to do my thinking is what it is for me. It's where I, I, I do it to relax and because I love it and I enjoy it. But it's a space where I do, particularly through my PhD, it's become a place more and more where I've done my really tricky thinking where it slows me down and I'm dealing with really heavy concepts that I find incredibly difficult to deal with. And it is the place where I sort of sort it all out. Um, so that, that's it from me um, about visual journals. Um, they've become a delight to me over the last few years. Um, but what I want to do is 
um, is I'd like us to do a little warm up together so that we can um, start to sort of loosen up a little bit before we make our book. Um, so what I'm going to do is share my screen and I'm hoping that we can all see a white page. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, that's the case. So what I'd like everyone to do is, um, it's my favorite little warm up to do, which I'm sure you've all done it, most of you have done it with me before, is that we're going to just do a really quick exercise of um, continuous line drawings and we're gonna have a go at drawing each other. But how we're gonna actually do this is together over the medium of Zoom. So um, if you could get up to your screen, I'm not sure if anyone knows how to use the annotate function on Zoom, but what you need to do is move your mouse up to the top of your Zoom page and you should come up with a little drop down menu, um, which set, has lots of different options and one of them is annotate. And when you click on that option, you'll get a little menu bar that has draw. Um, oh, someone's already on the go, which is fantastic. Um, can I just, I just want to make sure everyone has found that draw feature um, and then we'll all have a go together. So can I get, um, who can't find it for now? Is there anyone who can't find that function? Um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask me and we'll see if we can talk you through it a bit better. Every, everyone's got it? Awesome. So what I'd like you to do, and I think, I'm not sure if it all comes up um, as you're drawing or after you let go of your mouse, uh, but what I'd like you to do is you should be able to see a little, little boxes of all faces. Choose someone, so hopefully we all have our videos on. Choose someone. <laughs> And the rule for this, set, um, this little activity is that we're going to be looking at that person's face, not at what we are drawing. And we're also um, not going to lift our mouse. So we're gonna keep our finger on our mouse at all times. And uh, I'd like you to move fairly quickly. It's a challenging thing. It's really hard to draw with a mouse, um, but I'd like you to use your eyes to trace around the contours of someone's face that you can see here on this little banner down the side. Is everyone ready? Um, I just need to grab my mouse. Oh, okay. You can do it with the, the little track I know, but it's really, it's like, oh, all right. I'll, give, I'll just do that. Give it a shot. It'll be funny. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Because anything goes. <laughs> you might you might accidentally let go on a trackpad, but who cares? I think if you hold down, if you've got a trackpad, you hold down. Um, yeah, it's fine. I've just got to hold a button with one hand and then draw with the other. That should be all right. All righty. So we're going to do it quite quickly, like 15 seconds or maybe 30. We'll see how we go. So Lisa and Jane, I can see you there. You can just draw on paper if you want to. <laughs> Ready? Let's hit it. Yep. Oh, I can't see everyone's. I thought we'd be able to. No, I, I can only see two people. That's okay. They're coming they now. Not that I should know because I'm only looking at the face that I'm drawing right now. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. All right. All right. It's beautiful. I say cool. pick, finish that one off, pick another face. Try to pick a spare-ish place, but it doesn't matter if we go over the top. I think it'll be really great. Choose a different person. Let's go again. Oh, I'm going to change my colour. That's clever. Hold on. I'm on to my third person. Does anybody know where you change the thickness of the line? In the um, in just draw. The draw. In the drawer? Okay. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Got it. It's actually in the format. Got to choose a different face. Here we go. Maya's oh, making glasses. it very hard there. She's very, <laughs> in contrasted. Oh, fantastic. Look at us. We create <laughs> beautiful art. 
collaborative. <laughs> collaborative, beautiful art. I'm going to just take a quick photo of that before I um, get rid of it and we move on. Because we, sorry, I'll just read this. You can keep drawing if you want to. Beautiful. Is everyone happy if I get rid of that now? Yep. You might, that it, your journal will be made into, if you've only got an A4 piece of paper, that's totally fine. You'll just make a little bit of a smaller one, which is no problem at all. If you have slightly heavier paper, that is better because it'll hold up better underneath our paints and our water that we're using, but it doesn't matter. You can just use like photocopy paper. That's totally fine as well. So um, everyone should have, has everyone got their piece of paper ready? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step you through. I'm just going to move my camera down. I've sort of, I'm hoping that you can see correctly here. All right. So the first thing that we do, please, please shout out if I'm going too fast, like just unmute, tell me to slow down, tell me to repeat myself. Otherwise, because I can't really see you at the moment, um, you'll need to um, let me know verbally. So the first thing that we do is just fold our paper in half. Very simple. You can try really hard to be exact here and um, you'll have like a really neat book or you can be like me and just give it a shot and your pages will be a little bendy, but that's totally okay. So Which, are, we, are we folding it on the short end or the long end, Katie? It doesn't really matter because I've just folded it on the long end and now we're going to unfold it and then fold it the other way. Okay. The order doesn't matter so much. So what we want to have is two creases to make a cross in our paper. How are we all going? We're ready to go. Okay, so this bit's important because I made a very long book by accident, um, which is probably not what we want to do. So on the, have our paper landscape and you want to fold into the center. So I'm not really good at explaining things spatially, which is, but we are. Landscape. So landscape, so the long way, and then I'm folding from the ends inside to the center line. I'm sure we've all done this back in our day when we were making paper aeroplanes. It's um, sort of, so what we end up with is our page with eight sort of folded squares. So they're kind of more rectangles really, aren't they? Yes, sorry, you're right, very true. Rectangles, and then what we want to do is we've folded them into the centre there, is we want to fold it out so that we end up with, let's see if I can get it here so that you can see. We're ending up with, well, what would have been an aeroplane that we can throw. Does that make sense there? So you want to hold it by the folded bit. That's the bit that we're going to cut. So does everyone going to do, and it's, this is important, you've got the folded bit and you've got a creased line and all we're going to do is cut down this line here. So we're cutting down the folded line that we've made in the center there. I can do it all again for you, that's no problem, but I'm just gonna show you here because it'll make sense after I make this one cut. So it's like cutting the underside of the aeroplane. The underside of the aeroplane. And then once you've cut that there, what you're going to do is fold it over and you'll end up with like a little star like this, and then you can choose where it doesn't really matter that you fold it all over to one side and it creates your little book. Awesome. If anyone's having all that's okay, I took a few times to make it to figure it out. And, and then it's like that, basically, Katie? So what you'll have is you'll have a few pages that are a little bit open and we can fix those later um, if you feel need to. I um, 
with my book, I tried a few different ways of fixing that is I had some washi tape that I used and stuck down the side because I really didn't like the opening. It was stressing me out, um, but I don't think it really matters. Um, so I used the washi ta tape or masking tape or any sort of type tape, you could close it up to create a more solid book. But then when I made this one, is I actually had some pieces of paper, um, like I had a circle that I'd cut out from somewhere else. And so I glued it on one side and then folded it around. So that created, you can sort of see here that it's still a bit open. Um, but that solved the opening. Has everyone got a little book? ready to go for yeah so for me my visual diary is really for idea generation and um, inspiration so um, this is one of the first pages that I've done earlier this year in my PhD because I was because I'm looking at um, education in China or I was um, and when I was in China, I took a lot of photos of um, ginkgo trees because they have them there. And I, I see them as little heroes in the environment because they, they survive in a, um, a smoggy environment. Um, so I just started draw doing a whole lot of drawings with these. They're so uh, ancient too. They're just amazing. They're just beautiful, amazing trees. And they're just these, these am amazing fields of colour in a very, a very, um, you know, kind of structured, often grey environment. Um, so yeah, so then, so as you can see, I start, you know, I'll start with a drawing and then I'll start working into it with a bit of collage. Um, that's, that is actually a collage. It's, and collage and charcoal. Um, this is this is a collage that so I, I got a whole book a whole lot of books on China and um and I actually I've I've repurposed them part of my practice is actually recycling and repurposing, which is very much a collage thing, obviously. Um and I've been using those those images that I found in the books. Um yeah. This is so this is a found poem that I made from um, words that I lifted from the book. And in the middle of that is just some testing that I've done with my pencils and some new pens that I've got. Um, at the moment, I don't have a wall at home because I'm renting, so I can't work. I don't, my studio is not available at the moment, my physical studio. So I, I see my book as, as, a, as a, a moving wall. So I can put everything I want into it. Um, and the, you know, these are often things that I would pin on the wall. I, I do a lot of writing into my book as well. So often, and, and there's, it's not a linear process. So it's often, you know, I will start in one corner and then move into another corner to, to write. So these, these are just some more examples of, of collaging that I've done. So I'm just really testing my ideas. The ones on the right are from images that I've, um, photographs that I've taken in, in China. And the ones on the left are just experimenting with the collage materials from the book. Um, another thing I really like doing is, I always have a little bag with me. That, that I take around and I so I can collect things so not only you know my collaging is not just with 2d material it's also with 3d material so these are actually um, bits of ephemera that I have picked up from the building site and stuck them in my visual diary and then sometimes what I'll do with that is that I'll work back into it with my my colored markers um, I think for me, collage is really immediate, which is why I really like it. And so are, so are coloured markers. So that's why I often use those things um, because of their immediacy. And then that's just a, 
example of a couple of more pages. Um, yeah. It's also, for me, it's a place to evaluate and critique what I'm doing. So um, if I'm, if I'm, you know, making, I'm nowhere at a point of, I'm really, really in the beginning phases of, you know, developing idea development for P this PhD and the actual um, artwork that it I will produce. So, um, but, you know, further down the track, I, my visual diaries will be places where it becomes more of a plan, a tool for planning. But at the moment, it's just really in the idea, the ideation stage. Okay, that's me. Thank you. Adi, are you going to share with us um, some, are we going to do some collage with you now? Yes, we are. Let's do we it. are. Okay, so um, I'll just take that off. Okay, so what, hang on, I just have to stop share. Let me do that. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to put my screen down now. Hopefully you can see that. Let me know if you can't. Um, so in this little book that I've got, um, sometimes it's, you know, it's, it can be quite challenging to get started when you're faced with a blank page. So um, for me, in terms of collage, because it's so immediate, I, that's how I've kind of dealt with that problem. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to start with um, some text. I'm going to rip out of there. I often don't cut with scissors because I find scissors slows me down. So you can, I mean, I've got scissors. Sometimes I'll cut things. I like, you know, I like to, I see collage as a drawing. So um, I really like the line, this jagged line that I get from ripping, but also then I can contrast it with, um, with a, a sharper line from cutting. So if you, yeah, if you want to think about collage in terms of drawing and that the marks that you're making with the scissors or the ripping is, is actually a line. So then do something like that. I'm just um, ripping, am I, can you see, ripping out these, these different pieces. So, Adi, are you wanting us to um, be working at the same time as you right now? Um, what do you, yes. Do, do, do people want to do that? Do you, I think it's probably a good idea, isn't it? We, we can do, we can start with, um, if you've got, because um, we, Kate, I don't know if everybody's got it, but if you've got, um, we asked you to bring, you know, your idea or concept with you. If you've got, um, so, you know, something, a piece of collage that could represent that idea or it can be literal in terms of using text to represent that idea, then now might be a good time to find that. And we can use that to begin with. Um, we will be doing layering um, and We'll do that step next. But at the moment, just, just find some, some text. Can we see your hands again, Aidy? Yep. Sorry. Is that, is that good? That's beautiful. Okay. Okay, so um, has everybody got something they can work with? So I've got some um, old, this is a, a piece of, recycled drawing um, and so I'm going to put some of this in because it's got colour and I'm really just making this as random random marks
Okay, so once I've got something down on the paper, I will just play with it. Actually, I want something else. So, Aidy, yeah. um, when you do it, uh, yeah. do you ever glue and then keep working or do you generally sort of gather a bunch of things together, play with them before you glue? I gather a bunch of things together and play with them before I glue because I might want to change it. Mm -hmm. I glue Oopsie, too soon. I just went ahead and glued. <laughs> That's okay. That's absolutely okay. Um, I don't glue straight away because then I'm committed. And I like to, you know, make a composition first before I'm going to commit to, to sticking that down. Because it's, it's, it's the same with painting, really. If it's about um, putting things down and then taking, taking things back. So, um, with, you know, with painting, you, put, you can put your layers down, but you can also scrape off yeah. as well. So it's, it's really, really a, a painterly process. Isn't that funny? My natural tendency is to just go for it and then I'll cover it up if I don't like it. I'm a, I jump in straight away. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's such a, um, a painting way of doing things mm. as well. Because you can, with paint, you can cover things up. Whereas, you know, collage is not so forgiving as that. Although, mm. I mean, I could just cut it out. If I didn't like it, so I think I'll just I'll just stop there with that one, and and then I'll glue it down. So um, if you've got something that you want to glue down, then let's let's do that now. And also because I'm going to use this book, I'm going to use these, these purple, purple abstract bits of paint that I've got that I've drawn around. I'm going to, I think I'm going to use those as a, as a motive throughout the book. So I'm, I'm not just going to glue onto my first page. I'll, I'll glue um, into the book as well so that I can respond to those marks that I've made later on when we get into the painting. But you don't have to do that. That's, that's just a suggestion if you want to do that. Can I just clarify what you mean there, Aidy? So you're going to stick those images throughout a few different pages? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to glue this, this front cover down because I'm pretty sure about this one. I'm not thinking about being too careful because, I mean, I'm working really abstractly at the moment. I'm not working really literally. Um, I, I don't have any um, text that is in English to hand, which is, which is what I wanted, but I don't actually have it. Um, and so for me, this is, this is more of an abstract process. And so my, my concept is about movement. So... I'm looking at and diffraction. So I'm going to be like, so the through a diffractive process, I'm going to read the different marks which I have made with the collage through each other. But it's very abstract. I'm sorry, that I'm, I want to try. Is that too difficult? Katie? Mm -hmm. Is that too difficult? What I've just said? No, I think it's one, it's, it's one way of doing things. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what we need to be yes. really yeah. aware of is that 80s process and, and my process are very, very different. And that, yeah. um, I think for, for me, when I'm working, I, I off in my journals, um, when I'm working, I start playing with materials, to be honest, with not a huge amount of, Co cognitive thought is that mm -hmm. a purposeful directed thought I'm not sort of trying to represent anything like I often like I've, I've stuck on this little little thing here that's just from a reading that I've done 
Um, but right now, I don't know if you can see it. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, but for me, um, it's more about the process of just um, doing something with my body um, to not empty my mind. That sounds a bit funny. Um, to do something with my body and ha spend some time sort of just working with the visual while I, sometimes I might be dwelling on a concept that might come later. Um, for, for me, I start making first and then later on I'll start mulling over the conceptual things that I'm working through um, in a series of layers and reflections and they um, it certainly doesn't come at the beginning for me but I know other people would have a, a concept that they're working through um, that they start right from the beginning but I'd like to encourage you that um, if you want to just play with the materials without any sort of deep reflective thoughts that's totally okay i think there's something really powerful in just engaging with the color and the shapes and the feel of the different things that you're composing and putting together and then you could maybe think about it more deeply later or you know what you could just enjoy making which i think is also valid Excellent explanation, Katie. Does that answer your question a bit, Lisa? Um, and I think, you know, everyone comes at it from a different perspective, but if you're certainly just starting, let's just enjoy it and have some fun. It's been a rough week um, <laughs> for everyone. And I would say play with shapes like we used to play with building blocks <laughs> and, and just have fun with the tactile nature of it. And, it restores us somehow. Um, Aidy, I want to ask a practical question. Yeah. What's your favourite glue? Oh, hmm. Well, at the moment I'm using this because this is what I could get my hands on. Uh-huh. Um, if what will happen with the collage is that the glue and this kind of paper I'm using, which is just, um, it's not a very heavy grade paper and it will, um, it will crinkle. So mm -hmm. it was, for, the, for the purposes of this exercise, it's okay to do that. Um, and I'm not actually worrying about producing something that's perfect. I'm thinking about the creative process of it. Um, if I was thinking about making something that I would exhibit, then I would upgrade to a, a heavy grade um, paper, um, probably a, um, a watercolour paper. Yeah. And, and I would use a, a better glue, a more long, you know, a more permanent rather than just a, a PVA but PVA is is really fine for for making at this at this point and even a glue stick in a even PVA. glue stick it's yeah it's immediate it dries fast um, I've been using this lately and I'm thinking of getting some more um, Oh, is that, um, oh, the medium, yes. A gel medium, and it's been yep. really like it because then I, um, I glue things down with it and then I paint over the top of them and really seal it in. And, and then I really like adding like acrylic paint over the top and being able to really scratch back. It's been, I've enjoyed mm. that one. It's, it's also um, a much lighter, basically um, gel medium is glue with water in it. I know. So should I just add water to my PVA? No. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes it much lighter. So actually yeah. PVA. And it washes out of my brush much nicer. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So how's everybody going? Is anybody ready to share what they've you know, how they've started? Mine. Um, it's really hard to do, isn't it? That's nice. I used some washi tape that I had laying around. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you can use all sorts of things. I've just used, well, I've got my masking. 
please feel free to ask any questions. It doesn't need to be in the chat or anything. There's not that many of us. Um, or make any comments about yeah. making. Imagine that we were just around a big table making our things together. Yeah. So if anybody, Tilly, can, I, can we have a look at yours again? Sure, it's this one. Oh, nice. So what did you have uh, underneath? I just, I, I did the collage and then I kind of used some brown and white paint to brush it over. Right, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I mean, that's the thing is that no artist works the same. Everybody works differently. And that's the beautiful thing about collaborations is that we can work differently together. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm quite a minimalist and I like quite muted colour. So I've just, got, I've just gone for quite simple things at this point. It's like we've got the opposites here, Aidy, because yeah. the exact opposite of minimalist. Yeah. I don't know what the word for that is maximalist. Expressive. <laughs> Expressive. I always call it rainbow vomit. That seems to be what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to go muted. Occasionally I try to sort of really dull, uh, not dull, see that shows my bias, to, to bring things down and I just can't do it. I just, it's a good exercise. I really like that quote. Thank you, Braun. Um, so, Aidy, once you've glued your things down, mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me about how you use a highlighter? I've seen you in seminars and things using your highlighter, which I find fascinating. Yep. It's something I use often. Yeah. Well, again, it's immediate. So, that's, I love this. This is the one I can take into seminars because it's little and I can just pull out whichever one I want. So um, it's really, really, and this is all about creative process, it's really responding to what's already there. So you're echoing some of the lines that you see. I'm there. echoing some of the lines, the shapes. I might fill in, some, you know, just different colours in different places. Water to your highlighters, do they run? I don't know. I never have tried. Let's try it. A little bit. They're pretty permanent, though. They are pretty permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So again, if anybody wants to try this, if you've got a marker, um, all I'm doing is responding to what's there and make it so responding to the marks that I've got with the collage. Because remember, I'm you know looking at this that it's a drawing, so I'm mark making with the collage, and then I'm just responding to what's there. I won't do it on every page. What have we got here? I'll leave that one free. I've just grabbed a paint marker. And, yeah. Oh, it's hard to see. Um, I've grabbed a paint marker and sort of seen this sort of section here. And I thought, right, well, I'll go over the top because I really love, I love bringing, um, pushing the, the bits, the, the glued on bits back a little bit by, by drawing over the top of them so that there's sort of integrated layers. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but I really have been enjoying paint markers in a big way. 
or permanent markers, just like a black Sharpie or something like that to create lines and, and shapes. Yeah. I'm Is just... there something symbolic with you putting? I, I yeah. <laughs> So the, no, I'm just going to dredge in. Sorry, Katie. No, go, Katie. And now I'm just going to use another my my um my uni ball pen and just mark through those lines. I don't want this to get too crowded. Um, before the paint comes along. But that, you know, you might like lots and lots of crowded stuff, but... Aidy? Yeah? Are you okay if I share a little bit of my layering of some colours now? Because I am yes. itching to get my um, paint on. I think that's that's really good. Share a little bit of some of the things that I um, get up to. Uh, I um, thought I might share. Um, Aidy shared some of her journals on a PowerPoint. I'm not that organised, but I. Um, thought I might just show you my current stuff that I'm working on. Um, I've been using visual journals in my um, data analysis and my data collections for my PhD. Um, and so a lot of what I'm doing in my journals is thinking through um, the um, concepts that I'm working with and the theory that I'm working with. So I just, this is my latest of my PhD. D journals. I don't know. Does that work? If I just do it this way, can uh, yes. So I just thought I'll just share really quickly, and then I'll share, um, take you through. Hopefully, everyone's got access to some watercolor paints, maybe some watercolor pencils, and in a pinch, maybe some um, what do you call them? Like markers that you can add water to, and then that'll um. So I'll just share really quickly my latest journal, and one thing I wanted to share is. I am always really hesitant to do my first page because I feel like my first page should be this amazing page. So often it just sits there blank and I skip it because I think like I'll come back to it later. And so often I don't work in, in my journals, I don't work in a linear fashion. I sort of start a page and then move on and then I'll skip lots of pages and then sort of come back to them later. So I, I sort of work... Um, well, definitely not in chronological order or anything like that. And I like to do a lot of cutouts and different things um, with my journals. So I, unlike AD, am not a minimalist. Uh, I, I work on and I have on my desk, um, I put a fresh one on for you guys today, but I have big sheets of paper um, on my desk where I work and I spend a lot of time drawing and um, writing ideas down and doodling on there and then when it gets full I pull it off and I rip it up and I add it to my journal um, is uh, so I, I add little bits that I um, have been playing with and it's sort of just how I record my thinking um, but this here is what we're going to do today. I thought I would like. Um, I thought we'd have a bit of fun with um, my rainbow vomit um, of blending colours together. And I've been having lots of just really sort of slow, uh, meditative time lately, um, creating these really um, these colours that blend together really beautifully. And then taking a ballpoint pen or a permanent marker and really just tracing where the water and where the paint has flowed. Um, so I thought we'd have a, a bit of fun doing that. So that's sort of how I work in my journals. Um, so you can see, yeah, colour too much. So um, if I'm going to grab some watercolours, I'm going to use these guys here, which are just a cheap set from like a kid's ones. Um, you can use whatever type of watercolour you like. Um, but um, 
when I work, I just try, I, I basically, I like to fill a page because I hate white. I struggle with white space. So I like to get a big white page and I try to move across it. So I've got these and you can see, I don't know if this is too basic or not, but when I try to color, I like to color through the color wheel. So I might start, if I start with green, I'll then go to either yellow or blue and then along around the color wheel to say purples and pinks. And then from purples and pinks, I'll move into yellows. I didn't need to share a color wheel with everyone today, did I? We're all good. So, <laughs> so I'm going to just start working and then, but feel free to um, chat with us too as well. So I'm going to be pretty heavy with my colour. Um, it dries quickly. It doesn't bother me, but I'm really interested in how the colours um, or something you can, which I've got here. Um, if you've only got watercolour pencils, you can do the same thing by just laying the colours down. Um, can you see? What do you mean by laying the colours down, Katie? Nice and hard drawing, scribbling them on. I don't know, is it too glary to see? Um, I like to lay the colours down next to each other like this. And then, so I've gone green to yellow, and then after yellow, I might go back to blue, but I just try really hard not to put, um, uh, complementary colours next to each other when I'm doing this blending because if I do that I'll end up with some browns. Um, and then once you've laid the colours, um, these are, Jane, I'm assuming that these are the ones that you were talking about, the neo colours, um, which are some of my favourite um, pens. But I've lately been grabbing a water bottle, but you can just use a um, a paintbrush but I've lately been really enjoying just laying my water down with a spray bottle and then pushing that water to activate those colors pushing them like this and then using tipping and watching where the water goes so my when I work it's quite wet So this is what's been fascinating me lately, is the movement of paint in water. Does everyone have access to watercolours of some description? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to assume that's a yes. I've been a bit gung-ho here and I've got the green about to creep into my pink, which will cause brown, which I know I shouldn't be against, but I always struggle with browns. This is actually quite nice, Katie. I never really would think to put, you know, watercolours in with my collage. So it's, it's expanded it. It's great. And the paper will get really uh, weak. Um, but it'll come good eventually. I've always found it. It'll just dry a bit bubbly if you haven't got nice, good, like, heavy quality paper. But that texture is also exciting as well. So... Um, if you want things to dry, you can always use a, a hair dryer before mm -hmm. you move into your next layers. And then the other thing I was going to say is I never really worry that much about um, things creeping onto the other page because sometimes you can just shut it and then 
that's also some interesting, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but that you can get some really interesting movement there with the, the printing of the two colours. So when I work, I do a lot of this and I might lay down three or four pages of, um, I just enjoy the, how it feels and the, the colours and, and then later on I'll come back in and I might work back into that page like two or three months later and um, add things or uh, use it as a place for writing. But I just find it to be, for me, I find writing with the added textures and patterns to really be a generative space for me um, and it helps me think. And obviously with watercolour pans, the more you, like you dip the water in and the more you rub on the watercolour, if you've got like a, a, a pan, the, the more you rub, the more intense your colours will be. I know I, I usually teach children and um, I, young children and, and normally I, I have to share with them that, um, so you get your paintbrush and then you rub it around and you count to 10 we count to 10 as we're rubbing our paintbrush around on the pan so that we get a really strong bright color and then it will go a long way on our paper um, but um, Katie are you cleaning your brush in between um yes yes okay. I don't think you have to um you want to talk about that uh I do but only because I'm getting more water um because I'm wanting it to be a really watery um, thing. But, and you would need to clean your brush in between if you were moving, if you weren't, hold on, let me go back. I don't think that you have to clean your brush in between if you're moving throughout a color spectrum. So if you're moving, you're wanting it to blend anyway. I don't think it really matters, but, um, but I do because I like to add um, a lot of water. Yeah. Yeah, I, I clean. I clean in between two because I I don't want my colours to get muddy. Mm. Yeah. So um, it's always if people are interested, it's always handy to have some kind of rag with you. Yeah. Um, you can use toilet paper. Um, I have a sock. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm in the garage and um, all my washing is nearby. It is a clean sock, but it's no. Get clean, like in terms of paint. I love it. So I'm at the stage where I really want a hair dryer. Actually, I'm going to turn my heater on. See, what I would do if you really wanted a hair dryer is I would just move on to a new page. Um, I mean, a hair dryer would be great, but. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would do, um, and what's beautiful about these books is when I do go, I wonder if I do this, you'll be able to see. If I decide to go to a new page, I can just work here like this. And it sort of just stays up. It kind of um, doesn't close naturally anyway. So it gives it a bit of extra time to do some drying. So what's great is we've got quite a few pages that we can be working on. So I've had some fun with this page. I'm going to try a, can you, is it too glary? It looks really. No, it's fine. We can see that. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to a new page and I'm going to choose a completely different way of working in terms of a different color palette. My plan is to limit myself this time. Um, I'm going to limit myself to blues and greens. Um, but you can whatever you want. So, but I'm going to do that so that um, I can play with the movement of the colours and that later on I'm going to come back in on top of here with some acrylic paint, but I do want to give it just a little bit more time to dry. So you're really letting the paint... Move. Yeah, well, decide what it wants to do. Yeah. 
Yeah. Flip over and um, I've changed my mind in the moments that I've been talking um, and I'm going to do um, share with you um, a continuous line drawing of a face um, and then share with you just some of the really simple ways. Actually, I might just show you. Um, we met for a theory day at the beginning of the year. I think quite a few of us were there. Um, to and um, I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me just um, hold on. And one of my favourite things to do during our theory days is to, or any days where I'm listening to people talk for a long time, is to draw their faces um, and add a little bit of colour. Um, it's a really simple technique that I find um, really fun to do. So I'm just going to show you what, if I've got someone else, um, just the, the technique and... Um, how I add the colour. So I'm using a, for this particular one, I'm going to use a permanent marker because I will be adding some colour and I don't want the permanent marker to bleed. But then I will see if I can find a non-permanent marker to show you what's exciting about that. So the first one, I'm just going to, um, that is going to be upside down for you guys, but I'm going to draw Marilyn because... I can see her there. Um, and again, I'm going to use the same rules that I always give to myself, which is that I don't lift the pen. Although I must admit I'm having a little look-see here, which is a bit naughty, but that's okay. I've chosen Marilyn because she has that beautiful air. And I'm not actually going to finish that off. I'm not sure if you can see that um, there. Um, but sometimes you can just do a really simple contour line and then add with... Uh, if you've got watercolour pencils or I use these colour... Um, they're called Neo Colour Aquarelles. Um, what I like to do is just add a little bit of the colour just around the edges. And so this is sort of touching on what um, Aidy was saying about letting the um, paint or the colour move itself. Is I just like to add a little bit. Can you see that? Mm. Um, there. And then I... When I do it, I grab my paintbrush and I fill in the white spaces with the water first so that it's wet already. Because I find that the colour floats really nicely across this wet surface. So I'm just doing that cheek area and next to the nose. I'm quite happy for there to be a lot of white space in this. And then once I've added all of that colour, not colour, um, water, then I'm going to go and sort of agitate this colour that I've laid down in the corner. And it starts to float. And then it looks like you've done this really cool blending technique, but you haven't actually had to be careful with it because the water does the work for you. Um, uh, So you can sort of, um, I'm not sure if you can see that really well. It's quite a pale colour actually. But the, the colour just floats across that water and you end up with just a little hint of colour. And then I ha can't see it on Ellen, but you'd normally have red on. I'm going to put some like a red um, something in here.
I don't like that. Another way you can do it is um, you can use a non permit like a pen that's going to bleed if it gets water on it, um, which I'll draw someone else. really like about this is that you only need the pen um, because then you can just add the water to the line and it will create the paint for you. You'd get the same effect from one of the skinnier versions of those, you know, how they really, or yeah. even any type of gel pen. Um, I find there, oh, I don't have one at the moment, um, but any type of gel, gel pen seems to bleed really nicely. Um, even some viros, I think, because um, I've often been stuck in seminars and all I've had is like a ballpoint pen. And um, like my drink bottle, that's what I'll use. <laughs> but I've actually found it's been something I've been doing for a while in talks and boy, it brings back the memory of the talk. That's interesting. I think we, we had our post-grad um, conference last year and Oh, well, I guess this was a, a, a national conference I went to for our postgrad association. I still remember every single one. I didn't write anything, but I still remember every one of these speakers of what they were talking about and how this guy thought that he was the um, king of the universe and thought he was, I don't know, going to be the future prime minister. It was pretty hilarious. But... <laughs> Those memories are tied so strongly with the drawings, and I don't think I'd remember them if I didn't have the drawings there to to prompt me. Mm. I think also what's interesting, Katie, is as I'm hearing you talk, and we talked um, before about how our processes are quite different, but actually what we both do is allow our materials to have agency. Mm. So, yeah, our materials, you know, we're, we're being guided by the agency of our materials and what they're doing, whether that be collage or paint or charcoal or pastel or whatever we're using. Um. So I'm actually going to jump back in on there and start. I'm just going to use a pen because that's what I have. I think a ballpoint pen would work better because they don't bleed as if your paper is still a bit wet. Um, but I don't have one of those. And um, I'm going to start. You can see where the, the colours are. Either they're actually different colours or you can see different intensities of colours. And I've been really fascinated by just taking my pen for a walk <laughs> along those intensities lately and um, just tracing those lines. Um, you don't have to do it. You can do whatever you want right now, whatever you're feeling moved to do, but that's what I'm going to have a go at doing. Which I'll just... Fat, because they've all got a layer of gesso on every page, but I find that it, it gives me a really great surface to work with. Um, I don't even know, Aidy, what is gesso? Well, it's a ground for painting. So it's, it's um, traditionally, you know, you're using it how it is meant to be used. But oh, good. It's, um, it's, it's giving your, your surface um, something for the paint to hang on to. To grip on to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And um, yeah, so you're you're using it for what it's for. You can also use that that binder medium as well. Yeah. Underneath. Yeah. And, and I really and also my journal has it's the the one that I really love it. It's beautiful. Um, but the is slightly yellow, and I just it's I like a white, like um I like to start with a white base. So I'm working against that. So I'm um. I put it down and it, it means that like when I work with watercolors on top of it, it doesn't all crinkle and it holds mm. to paint sort of floats it grips more when I do drawing. The only negative that I found is when I'm writing with my pens, it like destroys them because it's got a slight sandpapery texture to it. Um, and it destroys my pen. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that's the, that's the sacrifice I'm willing to make. Um, it's cause traditionally it's for wet media. Yeah, but yeah. I use it for all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that being said, I've just used white paint before. Yeah. And that works just as well, although I prefer the texture of the gesso. I would struggle to do a whole background with oil pastels because it's tricky to then layer on top of them. Yeah. And they, yeah. unless you're planning to put, like if you're in a journal, um, if you're planning to do that and you've got like a double page spread with oil pastels, you probably want to put some sort of <coughs> paper in between them. Um, Say that again, sorry. Like some sort of transparency paper or something in between them because it's going to stick together. Yeah. It it'll literally melt together. Yep. Um, I like to use... Um, well, I haven't been using them lately, but in the past I have used, they're really great as a resist. So you can use them potentially sparingly underneath and then paint over the top of them and that will, and they'll resist through. Great. And then they're good on top of things. I find a lot more. Um, it's only because they're very resistant and depending on the type that you have, some of them are water soluble as well, which you need to be aware of. Water past, uh, oil pastels because they're really immediate and they don't take a lot of effort to get like immediate gratification from them. Do you use oil yeah. often, um, AD? No, I mean, I'm, I'm more of a 3D person anyway. So it's, it's very rare for me to use wet media like what we're doing today. <laughs> But yeah, I think I find oil pastels difficult in the books because you shut them. I think that's the, the thing I find most difficult in a, in a, and in visual journals, often you'll hear people say, you know, use watercolour paints and pens because those things, they dry fast, they're portable. Um, I'm very much an acrylic, I use acrylic paints in my, in my journals, but that's just because I love acrylic paints it is a little bit more tricky to use them when you're on the go though. They're not really the sort of thing you take to the cafe. I'm so that was my front page, which I really like. Um, just using the, the markers with the collage and then that's the second one. Oh no, this one, I, this is the page I really like because it's minimal. And this is the page I really don't like because it's just too loud and busy for me. And so I will, I will work to resolve that later. It's unresolved, that one. It's really unresolved. Almost. Yeah. I'm pinning it together like a little, like a little star as well. Creation. well I'm propping it up because it's, um, it's all wet. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm sort of standing it up because I've just... Um, I've just added acrylic paint to the the front, and then I plan to layer back in over the top of it. But it's 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 very wet at the moment. Mm. It's just standing up. This is my oh, page. I really like the um. Oh. It softens it again, but then there's this really stark. Oh, it's on this side. Um, stark contrast here. And so later on when it's a bit dry out, I might, I might talk to this and try to bring it in to um, 
So I'll probably bring in some more sort of uh, harder black stuff. Maybe in my writing, I might add some writing or something, but I might use black um, to sort of balance that out a bit later when it's drier. And then I've got sort of, in my mind, this is not done because there's all that white empty space. Um, I'll, I'll fill it later and then, and then here, but I'm waiting for things to dry at the moment. Mm. So that's it. So usually for, for me, I, um, I would let this sit for a while and I'd, and then I'd come back in and I'd add to it in a couple of days and I'd add, um, I'll probably be thinking very much about this, this initial quote that I've sort of put on. I do like to let things sit. I don't know why. Yeah. I think that's good. Cause then, I mean, I really like to work on multiple pieces at once and then mm. I, I never have to stop because I can let one sit and then move on to the next one. Mm. Yeah. The media and the marks. And the, and the time that you've spent doing it. Yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Yeah. Sometimes I find doing other people's techniques, like, and I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big copier. I love copying other people. I don't consider it a dirty thing. I'll do it. But sometimes copying other people's techniques and using them pushes you to make new connections that create, like develop new techniques of your own that you never would have come up with without doing it. So sometimes I think pushing yourself into other people's ways of working can then create and give birth to your own very individual ways of working. So I think it's Absolutely. Really, next time you meet, you'll have something new that you can share with us and then yeah. we try it and then I'll learn new things from there. So thank yeah. you so much to everyone for coming.